Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my April 2023 book haul. I have a couple of exciting things to show you this month, and we ended on a bit of a bang because in the U.S. it was a National Indie Bookstore Day where uh, people are encouraged to uh, give a little love to their independent bookstores. So uh, I enjoy taking part in that every year. And this year was also particularly exciting because I found a used book and record store that's like only half a mile from where I live. <laughs> so very exciting to think, you know, I can take a, I don't know, a 20 minute walk up a street and then voila, I'm in this uh, cutesy little house with uh, used books and such. It's called Mojo Mala in Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, I went ahead and, uh, as I often do for Indie Bookstore Day, I sort of uh, filmed myself and the walk I take. Like, you know, usually I'm in D.C., filming D.C., and today I was uh, in my uh, Maryland suburb of D.C. filming on a rainy day. It's not quite the most picturesque day, but I filmed anyway, and also, weirdly enough, uh, uh, the directions I uh, put on my phone took me a particular way to get there that I thought was a little weird and I took another way to get home, so I don't know, but uh, everything worked out and I made it there and I have a little montage to show you now of uh, my trip and uh, the inside of the store. Okay, well, I ended that last clip uh, showing you the two books that I bought, but I figured I'd hold them up again. These are uh, both by Geraldine Brooks. This is Caleb's Crossing and March. And I decided to pick them up, felt a little bad about it, you know, kind of uh, clearing out the Geraldine Brooks section of uh, the used bookstore. Uh, but I had it in mind that I want to do a Geraldine Brooks uh, sort of backlist read this year. Uh, I even have one of her books coming to me, hopefully as audio, this month, that I'll be reading this month from the library. These two I'll probably get to in the later half of the year. I have a lot of book reading scheduling that I do, and uh, this just happens uh, to be a later thing that I get to after, you know, getting to everything else earlier. But now I have these in hard copy, just, you know, and I could put them on the shelf until I need them. So that's exciting in and of itself. Uh, so, you know, my... Uh, later book uh, readathon seems more real, even if it's still months away. But yeah, uh, Caleb's Crossing, I believe, is about uh, a Native American boy uh, and uh, about his education uh, during uh, the early part of, uh, of the U.S. history. And then March is a retelling of Little Women. Uh, so Geraldine Brooks is a uh, well-known historical fiction writer and also uh, a journalist as well. 
But I also acquired another book for Indie Bookstore Day. Well, kind of, you know, whatever. But uh, uh, I found out about this uh, indie publisher, or rather an indie author, who actually, you know, created a publisher around her book uh, called Harborview Press. And it's possible she'll be publishing other people in the future. I'm not sure. But she launched it with uh, the uh, release of her own book. This is the novel She's Not Home by Lena George. Uh, and it came out uh, last week on the 25th, uh, and she had an author event at a Baltimore uh, bookshop because uh, she's a Baltimore-based writer. It's uh, the Ivy Bookshop, which I'll link down below. It's a bookshop that's actually really near my parents' uh, house, but I've never actually been there. I really do want to go in person, but I couldn't get myself there uh, like, well, in time for this book haul or anything, so I ordered it. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, she signed it, uh, see, right uh, here. So I got a signed copy. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I got some other merch. Uh, this is uh, the Ivy uh, Bookstore bookmark. And here's a fun uh, local sticker for Baltimore Books Baltimore community. I really feel more like a D.C. person now, having lived in the D.C. area for, like, uh, almost uh, two decades uh, now, uh, but uh, I was born and raised in uh, Baltimore City and Baltimore County, so, you know, and it's so close that maybe I should go ahead and uh, frequent or try out some of those indie bookstores as well, but I'm really excited for this book. I think the cover is just beautiful, and I will read from the back. Cheryl already lost one daughter by being the fun parent. She's determined to do it right with her other daughter, no matter how much Mariana whines about one chance for a normal night. No misbehavior, no stoner friends, absolutely no parties. As if missing homecoming counts to tragedy. Cheryl knows real tragedy, and she's not about to make the same mistake twice. But all Mariana wants is to escape the shadow of her sister Sheena. She's tired of being seen as the daughter that survived and missing out on experiences she shouldn't have to fight for, like senior homecoming. So when Mariana discovers the truth about how Sheena died, she runs away. For the first time, Mariana is faced with the reality of making her own choices, while Cheryl is left to contend with losing another daughter. So yeah, I just feel like this is right in my wheelhouse with family drama and hopefully really well fleshed out characters with interior lives. So uh, looking forward to it. This next book is not quite a traditional book. It is a literary magazine. This is the Iowa Review, which I received uh, by joining up uh, with an organization called uh, Journal of the Month Club. Uh, I'll link to them down below, but they are a subscription service for people who want to, you know, get into reading more uh, literary journals, you know, journals uh, that publish uh, short stories and poetry and artwork and the like, and, uh, you know, essays. Um, but, you know, there's so many and it's so overwhelming uh, that I thought uh, something like Journal of the Month would be a really cool way to, you know, actually get some journals uh, into my regular reading life. Uh, I joined the quarterly subscription and my thought was that uh, I would read the short stories out of these journals uh, for my AM reading videos. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of reading one short st story uh, in an anthology per am reading video and then once I run out of those uh, hopefully sometime in the summer I'm just gonna jump right into the Iowa Review and uh, then there should be another journal that I'll get in a couple months that I can get to right after this so I'm really excited about this uh, new sort of uh, reading journey that I'm on and that I get to share it with you and that I get to read more short stories and read from more literary journals uh, which or so underappreciated, really, in uh, most of the literary world. So uh, I'm uh, looking forward to it, and stay tuned. I'll be back with this uh, sometime in the summer. And finally, with regards to my very imminent upcoming TBR, I have Abomination by Ashley Goldberg, which I picked up uh, because I decided uh, earlier this year that I wanted to read this for the Maybe Midrash Readathon, which uh, technically takes place in May. So the Maybe Midrash Readathon was started by Jason at Old Blues Chapters and Verse and a couple of other people. And I don't actually think they're officially doing it this year. At least I haven't seen any videos to the effect of it. But the point is to read um, fiction and nonfiction that deals seriously with uh, religion. 
uh, and maybe and midrash is a Jewish concept, a Jewish form of writing that uh, sort of extrapolates on holy texts and stories, and you know fleshes them out a bit with the uh, the thoughts of uh, you know ye uh, humble people on the ground. Uh, and so I do tend to appreciate reading a lot of uh, Jewish fiction as it is, and uh, also nonfiction. So I thought this sounded like the perfect readathon for me. And I chose Abomination, uh, which won one of the National Jewish Book Awards earlier this year because I thought it would complement the other book that I already chose for nonfiction, uh, which is actually a book of uh, modern Midrash, officially, from uh, Israeli women. And this sort of is uh, on the opposite gender scale, and it follows um, an Orthodox uh, Jewish community in Melbourne, Australia. And in fact, uh, I don't believe this book is officially published in the U.S., but uh, thankfully we live in a small world, so uh, I could still get my hands on it. Uh, so I'll read from the back. Melbourne, 1999. Ezra and Yonatan are best friends whose lives are forever changed when their school, the ultra-Orthodox Jewish Yahel Academy, is rocked by a scandal and they are thrown onto divergent paths. Twenty years later, the lives of the two men are very different. Ezra identifies as secular and atheist, while Yonatan has been ordained as a rabbi and teaches at the academy. By chance, they are reunited, and the events of their past and present collide with devastating consequences. Abomination lays bare the clash between religious and secular worlds in contemporary Australia, and provides a revealing glimpse into a closed community. With great tenderness and insight, debut author Ashley Goldberg tells the story of an enduring and evolving friendship as Yonatan and Ezra struggle to come to terms with the choices they have made, the search for meaning, and forge their own identities. This is a beautifully observed moving story from an exciting young writer. So yeah, I am excited to go all in on this one uh, sometime in May, uh, and I'll certainly be back uh, within uh, the next month or so to share my thoughts on this book and also the rest of my Maybe Midrash Readathon. And speaking of which, I'll wrap up the video here and uh, tease you with my next upcoming one, uh, which should be, in fact, my official Maybe Midrash announcement video, where I'll talk about uh, everything else I am personally doing for this readathon, whether officially or unofficially. I don't know, I guess it's, you know, <laughs> these are so uh, specifically tailored, this particular type of readathon, that, you know, it's so easy that you can still do it alone, no matter if there's, like, you know, a community behind you or not. But uh, if anybody else is uh, taking part in maybe Midrash, uh, if you're, you know, reading any sort of uh, religious uh, fiction or nonfiction, uh, you know, feel free to share uh, that with me. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, I gotta get going. Now we're officially into May, and I gotta get going to work and get on with my schedule here. <laughs> so I'll also leave links to Indie Bookstore Day and uh, the Indie Presses and Bookstores that I mentioned linked down below. I hope all of you who participated last weekend in Indie Bookstore Day had a, got a wonderful haul and enjoyed your experiences in uh, the indie businesses. Uh, and anyway, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.